You know my next guest, she's an actress, a writer, producer, film director. Her most recent film, Violet, stars Olivia Munn and was first shown at the Toronto Film Festival last year. Justine's latest project is her new book. It's called Face, One Square Foot of Skin. It's about aging, how women feel about it, and the pressures to continue looking young. Gee, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Justine <laughs> Bateman. So nice to have you back on Good Day, New Good York. Good to see you. You know, I love the book because in the book you talk about growing up and watching these films and watching these beautiful Italian actors and actresses and French actors and actresses kind of age before your very eye and they're celebrated, yeah. but not in America. Well, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, when I was growing up, I would look at like Anna Magnani and uh, Isabelle Hubert and uh, um, Charlotte Rampling, and I was like, oh, I can't wait to look interesting like that, you know? <laughs> and when I finally got there, society had gone vroom, like this. And um, yeah, it's like, no, everybody's got to have this smooth, like puffed up face. And I'm like, wait, what? I know. In the book, you say that, you know, you didn't realize that there was anything wrong with you, right? <laughs> Until you started Googling, and then yeah. you say, you can imagine how surprised I was to find that many people disagreed with how you felt you looked. Mm. I was taken aback to find that quite a few people had taken to internet chat sites to passionately complain that Justine Bateman looks horrible now. Yeah, so when that happened, it took me down a rabbit hole um, and then I had to figure out what was my irrational fear underneath that? What was I, because I feel for everyone it's, I'm afraid if, I, if people think I look old then therefore, and there's some fear like afraid they won't be listened to anymore, they won't find a mate or they'll lose their job or they won't get a job, whatever it is. But my position is that that fear already existed in you before your face started changing. So it's an opportunity to deal with that fear. So once I dealt with my fear, then I was like, what fears do we hold as a society, as a group, that keeps this idea that women's faces are broken and have to be fixed? And so that the book goes into like some of those reasons that people might have uh, unconsciously that makes them think that. So the, the book is you, you, you have these fictional characters mm -hmm. and it's interesting. The jobs range from actress, which you can understand because we've seen some of our actresses and what they look like, right? Yeah. And then it goes to a postal worker. And I, I was so happy that you went the whole gamut yeah. because everybody feels that way. Yeah. And we've had the reactions have been from you know, we think it's like, oh, it's just America and it's LA and New York. It's not. It's Wisconsin. It's uh, it's uh, uh, it's Denmark, it's Australia, it's the reactions were so much bigger and so much more international than we ever expected them to be. So um, it was uh, the DMs that I've gotten from people are really remarkable, including uh, one from an uh, older gentleman who's been married to his wife for over 40 years and she's planning on getting a facelift and he just is horrified at the idea that her face would be gone. The face he has known for 40 years mm. would be gone, so he got the book. I mean, to me, you know, if someone wants to change their face, hair, uh, body, whatever, it's theirs to do whatever they want with it. But I'm saying, take the opportunity to look at the fear that's underneath it. Otherwise, that fear is going to drive your car for the rest of your life and mm. cause you to make other decisions that aren't really you. So perhaps. I'm just wondering, are plastic surgeons, like, is there a union for them? Are they calling you, protesting your book? No, in fact, How the, dare front, you? In fact the front of this, I, the pic, this picture, I went to a plastic surgeon and I asked him to please give me a consultation and tell me what he feels he would need to do to my face and then mark me up as if we're going to go into surgery. And then I, my friend Stephen Myers Dominguez came and took the photo and that that was the picture it's amazing and I'm yeah it, yeah it was interesting to hear what he, he felt I needed to do so you're gonna make this but he was he was great you're gonna make this into a film yes we have a great cast so far and we're casting more and more because there are a lot of women's parts there's 14 of the stories are gonna be in the film yeah in the meantime you have a film out right now Violet yeah. everybody's talking about it with yeah. Olivia mom give us set us up because we have a little clip oh sure so um, Violet is about the voice uh, the thoughts we have, the negative thoughts we have in the film, I call it the voice about um, that cause you to make fear based decisions that tell you, oh, don't do this or X will happen. And um, this is about a woman who, who has a life that's uh, fear based and she wants to have a life that's more uh, instinct based. But how do you cross that chasm? So, All right, let's take a look at Violet. Yeah, I, I feel weird lately. Don't tell her. Are you sick? No, I just. 
you know, the committee in my head, you know, just never really noticed it much before. What committee? You know, the voice that tells you that you're a piece of <laughs> you know, whatever. I mean, everybody has it. You know what I'm talking about. I guess. So this was the first time you directed, right? This was your debut? This is my first feature film. I'd done two shorts before, yeah. Wow. And so were you nervous? No. Um, no. You've I'd, been in the business for a long time. I've been in the business for a long time, yeah. and I'd wanted to direct since I was 19, but the timing never felt right. So, yeah. And it, the timing didn't click in until right after I graduated from UCLA at 50. So... I mean, so By that's way, another thing. Like I, every, oh, most of my accomplishments have, have happened since 50. That's amazing. So, I can't believe like you were studying at 46, 47. Yeah, 40. that was great. That'll be the third book talking that, about that. But to me, like there's two ages, dead or alive. So while you're alive, do it's your time. Do what you want. And like, I think everybody gets like a collection of skills and talents and opportunities. Yours are different than mine. No one can touch yours. No one can touch mine. And the only one that could, the only person that can keep me from uh, enjoying those things is me. If I say, oh, I can't true. because I'm, I'm X age or something, which is, why would I do that? So true. It's a great <laughs> book. It will make you feel better. Justine Bateman, so good to see you. You too. Congratulations on everything, the book and uh, Violet as well. Great to see All you best. too.